I would take a sketchbook and just wander outside. And if I didn't know what something was, I would draw it, then come back and compare it to my field guides. Um, Because of course, I grew up without an iPhone, without cameras, you know, everything that that um, if I wanted to find out something, I had to look it up. Want to save time with common emails, grading comments, and repetitive typing? Use TextBlaze today to eliminate repetitive typing forever and get your work done within your working hours. Create easy-to-use templates with endless customizations and powerful automation. Try it free today at textblaze.me slash shifting schools. That's T-E-X-T-B-L-A-Z-E dot me slash shifting schools. And thank you to TextBlaze for being a Shifting Schools partner. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Shifting Schools. I'm so excited today to be joined by author Rebecca Lowell. Her new book, Catching Flight, is going to be the topic of our conversation today. Uh, It's such a beautiful book. Out in time for Earth Day, for those of you who don't have it marked on your calendar, that is April 23rd. So that's coming up next week. But we're here today to talk about uh, this beautiful book, uh, some of the illustrations in it, the process behind creating it, and uh, everything else that Rebecca and I just happened to be talking about today. So Rebecca, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. So let's get started with uh, just you know looking at your website, which we'll have a link to in the bio, and, and looking over this book, like your love for nature. Where does that come from? Was something in your childhood? Did you grow up outside? Did you go camping all the time? Like what, what, What's it look like? Yeah, so I am a Maine girl. I grew up um, mostly outside. I was homeschooled as a as a young child. I eventually ended up in high school, but I was homeschooled, and that allowed me to spend as much time as I wanted outside, which was um, more than under a roof. So I would take a sketchbook and just wander outside, and if I didn't know what something was, I would draw it, then come back and compare it to my field guides. Um, cause of course I grew up without an iPhone, without cameras, you know, yeah. everything that, that, um, if I wanted to find out something, I had to look it up. So, cool. yeah. I love yeah, that. So I, yeah, that, that comes from, from much time in the outdoors. <laughs> do you still spend a lot of time in the outdoors as an adult? Yeah, I do. I do. And if, if I don't get outside, I notice that I'm not in my best headspace. Interesting. So I really have to spend time outside to feel grounded, to feel peaceful, to feel um, centered and creative. Mm. So that's where I get most of my inspiration. Yeah. I think it's a lot of the same for my wife and I. We do a lot of camping and a lot of hiking. And it's about this time of year um, where we're just itching for the weather to be just a little bit warmer so we yep. can do just, you know, a, a few more longer hikes. And uh, but yep. the winter months are, are difficult, you know, trying to get outside and you feel that pent up, that kind of pent up just nature. Exactly. Uh, fresh air and stuff. Uh, talk our walk our listeners through a little bit your process for writing and illustrating Catching Flight. What was the process like creating this book? So I went to um, Holland's University for grad school, and I had a project in my thesis that was a nonfiction about birds. And I had posted an illustration of it on Twitter for a hashtag called Color Collective. Oh, cool. And it was a watercolor illustration of a feather and birds coming out of the feather. And I had known Frances Gilbert through Holland's because she had come to visit. And so we just stayed connected. And one day when I posted that illustration on Twitter, she messaged me and said, do you have a book to go along with that illustration? And I said, I'll write one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wrote a poem and sent her a picture of it in my, um, just one of my sketchbooks. Cool. I, and she said, yes, type that up and send that to me, please. And that's how Catching Flight was born. It was born from art first, Mm. which is not how I usually create a book. Usually it's the words that come to me first, and then I illustrate the words. This one was inspired by art. So you never know how something is going to happen. Awesome. And were the different pictures of the birds in the book, are they based off photos that you've taken? Is it just your experience being a a out in nature watching birds? Where did, where did that kind of, yeah, it's a combination of things. It's some of it is just from like 
vivid memories that I have Mm. or seeing a certain bird a certain number of times and you sort of draw up this image in your head from it. I used um, multiple photo references. So it's not one thing. You know, I looked at hundreds of pictures of birds. I do take my own photography, but I don't often get close enough to get the nice reference photos that you really, really need. Um, So it's a combination of mine and and um, all kinds of other references. And what I start with is a storyboard. So after we decided on the words, then I, I make these tiny thumbnail sketches. And then from there, we make some revisions. And then from the storyboard, I blow those up and make more refined drawings. And then from there, I add the paint and scan it and go from there. I love. That. I don't know if that answers the question about That's, the process. It can be no. pretty complicated. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that, and I love this idea of illustration first. Uh, yeah, you know, I think a, a lot of times when we think about writing a book, we start with the words. Yeah, um, and just the idea that uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about the storyboarding? Is that something we talk a lot about in education? Yeah. about this ability to kind of get kids to write out a story. And so your storyboard was the, was the images first, kind of like the images of the birds you wanted in the book. Yeah. Yeah. So I know uh, a lot of this is going to be on audio, but I can provide like JPEGs of anything that you want, but oh, cool. this was the original painting that inspired the words. Awesome. So it's a, it's actually a wild turkey feather. So this did not end up in the book. It was just sort of what, you know, birthed it. And then from there, I have this image here of like the scratch, chicken scratch, you know, of my poem from a notebook. And then from there, storyboard. So it's on 11 by 17 paper, just to give listeners an idea. And it's broken into um, page spreads. So I think, let's see, 16, 16 page spreads. So this would be what they call a self-ending picture book where I wanted to illustrate the end papers. So I also had uh, room for back matter. So in the book, there's 10 birds illustrated, but there's 16 page spreads because you have to allow for end papers, copyright, dedication, back matter, and all of that plus cover. So That is so cool. We're going to have to get some of those pictures to to put in the show notes. Those are beautiful. Sure. Thank you. I love the process because, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot in education is that the learning happens in the process, not the product, right? The product is what you got through the learning process of writing it. Yes. As you kind of think through writing this book, what was some of the learning for you that kind of came through by, by storyboarding, by scribbling out in your notebook, you know, the poems that go with those? What are some of the learnings that, that you felt came just like own reflective learnings that came out of writing a book like that? A lot of it, as far as the words go, like it's for me, it's a combination of you don't repeat exactly like you don't. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is redundancy. You don't want your words and images to be redundant. So a lot of the words, what goes into editing, I don't remember how many words this book ended up uh, landing on. I think somewhere around 50. It's not a lot of words, right? which means that there was a lot of figuring out exactly what was that right word. So you wouldn't think there would be a lot of rounds of editing in a picture yeah. book that has such a low word count, but it, there were, there, there was a lot of editing um, just to make sure that we were using that exact word. It's like, oh, is that one the right feeling? Is that one the right feeling? Maybe the comma needs to go there and then the rest of the sentence needs to go on the next page mm. for that page turn impact. So there was a lot that we took into consideration. I love that. It's so crazy. I just love when you, you know, you dig into things like that and and being able to just think about a the impact of words, b how how many times you go back and you edit and you think about all the different ways that you can play off this for the reader, you know, even in a book that yeah. has 50 words, you know. Yep. It's, it's yep, funny. one sentence. I think we we drew it out even over a few pages, you know, just one sentence. Yeah. Just for that so emotional funny. effect. So. I love that. Hi, folks. We'll get back to today's conversation in just a minute. We're super excited to introduce you to an ad, TextBlaze, to our growing list of shifting school sponsors. If you hate sending emails and working late while grading student assignments, 
and you're like most teachers, always looking for a way to save time and get your work done before you go home, well then, TextBlaze might just be your answer. With TextBlaze, you can save time on repetitive typing and get your work done within your working hours. Using TextBlaze, you set up keyboard shortcuts to insert frequent email replies, common grading feedback, and any repetitive text you find yourself typing. TextBlaze is a Chrome extension that once you install it, allows you to create customized shortcuts to use anywhere within your Chrome browser. So create custom shortcuts to use in any web-based LMS system like Google Classroom or Canvas, or any web-based email system like Gmail. TextBlaze has saved users over 28 hours a month Think about that for a second. You spend a few minutes setting up your templated responses to students, parents, or colleagues, and then with a couple keystrokes, have TextBlaze write it for you. One of my favorite features is you can create a template and also have TextBlaze put the cursor where you want it within the template. So imagine you're sending home the same email over and over again to parents. You can create a TextBlaze template that writes the email for you and automatically puts the cursor where the student's name needs to appear within the email, saving you time and clicks. Don't take my word for it though. You can try it out for free by going to textblaze.me slash shifting schools and set up your account and see how TextBlaze can save you time on repetitive tasks. So what are you waiting for? Visit textblaze.me slash shifting schools to get started saving time today. That's textblaze.me slash shifting schools. And we thank TextBlaze for being a shifting school sponsors. And now back to our conversation. You know, the book has been described as both a great gift for soon to be graduates and for those who just love birds and nature, uh, and maybe bird watchers in your family, uh, you know, graduation isn't that far away. Can you talk about how you see your book as a resource that has a message for the class of 2023? So I feel like the past couple of years, we've all been through a lot collectively. And part of the reason I wanted to write a book with a feeling of hope is Mm -hmm. that as I was writing this, we were sort of starting to come out of everything we had been through, I guess there was a mix of things going on. And I wanted to be that light. I wanted this book to feel like a light because birds are such an inspiration for the fact that they're so fragile, yet they migrate, you know, thousands of miles. They withstand extremely cold temperatures by fluffing up their feathers so that that air can stay warm against them. They learn like Canada geese will, you know, fly in a V formation and change positions so that when one goose gets tired, the next one comes up and can kind of pick up that, that slack or the, like that draft, you know, to carry Mm -hmm. each other through. And so I feel like birds have a lot of metaphors that we can learn from and a lot of behaviors that we can learn from. And Hopefully, this book feels like a breath of fresh air, or it feels like um, something to lift you up. You know, no pun intended, I guess. But right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of fun with bird puns um, lately. So I just hope that you know a reader can see this and think, if a bird can do that, so can I. Oh, I love that. I've got two senior graduates in my own uh, in my own life this year, and they're both going to be getting a copy of this because I, I agree with Wonderful. you. I think it's Thank just a you. great. You know, and especially as a, a, you know, I'm just thinking that they're both going off to university and everything we've, we've been through and just that idea of hope and, you know, uh, tenacity that you have to have as you're kind of leaving K-12 education and doing whatever life has planned for you afterwards. Uh, yep. I, I think that's just a great it's message in, in the book. So yeah. I just want to put Thank that you. in the back of people's brains who might also have uh, those graduating this year. It makes a, a, for a beautiful, a beautiful and just different, unique gift, maybe for those that are graduating uh, at whatever Thank level you. that might be. So uh, that's awesome. I do want to touch on, we found over on Twitter uh, that you have shared about learning to do surface design. And I got to be honest, I've never heard of surface design until I saw your tweet and I was like, what in the heck? Cause that's the kind of person <laughs> I am. Right. And you had a mentor. You talk about having a mentor for surface design. Can yep. you talk more about what, so first of all, what is surface design? And then what's it like? Uh, what, what can people do to maybe learn more about it? Sure. So 
Surface design is the art of creating artwork that would go on any surface. So if you think mm. of wallpaper, fabric, maybe packaging, um, card decks, journal covers, there's there's a whole industry out there that is not related to Kidlet, but is also very much about storytelling. And mm. that's what drew me to it is that I love to tell story visually. And so I learned how to create repeating patterns from Bonnie Christine. She is my surface pattern design mentor. And I create those patterns in Adobe Illustrator. And so it's a very different way of working. I love to have multiple projects going. So I'll have a book going and then I'll also be creating patterns kind of inspired by whatever else I'm working on. And I create a story within maybe 10 patterns. And it's interesting that you ask about it because after three years of creating three different pattern collections and a portfolio and pitching, I just signed my first fabric collection about two days ago. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say where yet because details are still unfolding, but I am officially okay. going to be a fabric designer. So I'm very excited. That is so cool. Thank you. From, Thank you. from, from author to illustrator to fabric designer. I love it. And so is, is the whole thing okay. about, so service design. So let me see if I could just help like just in my own mind. So basically you're creating, and is it usually repeating patterns? Is that the idea for like, it doesn't have to be head. like if it's fabric okay. or wallpaper, usually it's repeating patterns. But sure. one thing that's kind of fun to do, like as for an exercise, as you're thinking about surface design of where it might end up is to like, next time you're in target, look around and see what has artwork on it. And all of mm. that is considered surface design. So wow. it kind of just opens up this like whole new world where you're like, oh yeah, somebody got paid to put that artwork on that art print or that greeting card or that candle or mm. um, wine bottle labels, like all those things needed somebody to design it. Um, so That's Bonnie cool. actually has a class like, enrollment is open this week and that's the class that mm -hmm. I took to learn about it. So that's why I've been sharing about it. So any one of those links on my social media, um, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, trying to be on TikTok. I'm not very good at it yet. Um, <laughs> any one of those places has a link to learn more about her class. It's called surface pattern design immersion. Oh, I love that. And I just yeah, keep thinking, you know, you. In, in the world that we live in today, to your point, like when you said a deck of cards, I'm thinking, you know, how great would it be if you've got, you know, we talked to K-12, a K-12 audience, you got a kid that's really into, you know, drawing and there's this whole, whole industry around service design. Yep. Can you create a design for a deck of cards? And the cool thing is in the world we live in, you could literally go get that, like you could upload your photo and print it on a deck of cards. You, you can could. print it on a a t-shirt, right? Like you can actually yeah. go and actually see your design through in a small sense before, you know, you're somebody like Rebecca Lowell who can <laughs> then sign a contract and actually have Thanks. this stuff show up in a, in a store. So that's kind of cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, before I had a fabric collection, I kind of did that where I ordered some flower sack towels with my designs on them and then sold them at like pop-up, you know, art shows. <sighs> Perfect. So that was, that was really fun. It's like, Hey, I just want to see my design on fabric. So I'm going to order some and I did I it, it and sold them. <laughs> That's so so great. It, it's a lot of fun. That's great. Um, we'll make sure there's links to all of that in the show notes as well. Um, and, and links to everything that uh, Rebecca has, uh, any other links you want us to, to make sure we have in the show notes there? If, if somebody wants to reach out to you, if there's an art teacher or a teacher who has a student who's maybe really passionate about this and they're like, this is the person for me, where, where's a good spot for, for teachers or students to reach out to you? Sure. So my website is at um, RebeccaLowell.com. So it's R-E-B-E-K-A-H-L-O-W-E-L-L.com. And there is a contact form on there. And I answer each one personally. I love that. So it might even be a good writing assignment, you know, write yeah. to Rebecca and ask I her questions <laughs> and uh, get, get a real author, illustrator and surface designer to, uh, to inspire and, and help you uh, create the next thing. So I love that. Thanks. So. Yeah. I'd love to answer any questions that any budding artist has. So 
Thank you. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Again, the title of the book is Catching Flight. It is a gorgeous illustration of birds uh, soaring on the wings of birds by Rebecca Knoll, Catching Flight. You can uh, download that and buy that anywhere and uh, set out in time for Earth Day, which I think is just also a great, a, a perfect time to get this out. This episode's coming out a week before uh, Earth Day. So hopefully you have enough time to go and maybe buy the book, read it to your class, uh, dissect it a little bit. It is beautiful. The illustrations are gorgeous. Rebecca, thank you thank so you. much time, uh, so much for spending time with us here today. Really appreciate it. And thank you for this amazing key of artwork and literature, uh, Catching Flight. Thank you so much for having me and for all of your kind words. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Just a reminder, you can save $25 on any of our learning pathways at shiftingschools.com by using the code SSPOD25 at checkout. If you like today's show, or if you have something you'd like us to talk about, send us an email at info at shiftingschools.com. And of course, rates and reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, we'll see you on the network.